Um, Geraldine and I are doing a bit of a double act uh, this morning, uh, this after, well, this morning, the late afternoon, morning. So uh, my name is Rachel Murta. I'm the manager of the Tees Valley Nature Partnership. Uh, we are one of 47 nature partnerships that cover England. Um, and I, um, gosh, well, we've been going since 2012 um, and we've been mandated by the Secretary of State. Uh, even though there's 47 nature partnerships across England, not all nature partnerships are formed equally. Um, so, um, yes, we're probably, we probably pride ourselves that we're probably in the top 10 of nature partnerships in the country. And Tim's already mentioned a couple this morning, actually, like Kent, for example, that are doing really well. But there's others as well, like Manchester, and they're spread throughout the country. So there's a good spread of really good functioning nature partnerships. Um, we are very lucky that we've been um, we're the only nature partnership to be funded by the community fund and that's because they've recognized that um, we do a lot and we've got big ambitions to work with our communities we might not have iconic landscapes but we've got the people that need nature in our area and that's a real drive and focus for what we do more nature for more people across Tees Valley so without further ado I will follow on you can go to our website if you need to know more about nature partnerships. So I, I'm not going to go into great detail about this because I know that uh, Becky has already touched on this and of course Tim has, but you know, we need to do something. Um, nature has continued to decline despite the best efforts. Um, and as you'll know, um, that, that we've put great efforts in our country to try to re re reduce the and reverse the, the biodiversity decline but it, it continues despite all our best efforts so we need to do more we need to step up our game and we need to integrate it more into um into what we're doing um and i've been working in this sector for over 30 years and uh, believe me it's been like that in terms of, of of efforts and ambitions so but we we're turning a corner there's some great amb ambitions in the forthcoming environment bill as well so that's just a reminder that you know this is real and we need to do something about it um just to reinforce that <laughs> it's uh, tim touched on the fact that it's not just about a biodiversity crisis or a climate crisis we're we know crises 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 um there's a lot going on, isn't there, in the world at the moment, <clears throat> but actually all these ambitions and these plans, local nature recovery strategies being one of them, is a way to address many of these. You know, we, we can start to address the obesity and inactivity epidemic. You know, we can start to look at the economic uh, downturn, you know, through nature, nature's recovery. It's multifunctional. We can do lots with it. It's not just about saving hedgehogs. It's so much more than that. So um, the big picture is this National Nature Recovery Network. Um, that's about joining it all up, identifying our, our best areas, our great areas. And we've, we've got this whole hierarchy of protection, as I'm sure most of you know, because you have to come across this in planning. Uh, it's about cut, um, joining those up, joining up corridors, making stepping stones, all these things um, through uh, all this additionality through biodiversity net gain that we've been talking about this morning. Um, it's about an integrated approach through policy, but also in, in funding as well. So we've really turned a corner with these ambitions. Um, it's not going to be a nice to have, let's uh, do this um, uh, and put it on a shelf to collect dust. It's actually, it's going to be more integrated into our, our finance and policies than ever before. So I've taken this because very, uh, we've uh, we've been in national discussions for uh, a couple of years um, and Chris Davis, who is the Nature Recovery Network Partnership, actually came to our conference this year and delivered a presentation. So we've got um, some great material that you can look at. Uh, previous to that, we had somebody who did um, a presentation um, last year on nature recovery, um, nature recovery <coughs> strategies. So it's about spatial tools, it's about strong partnerships, and it's about integration. Um, it's a new system of spatial strategy. So yes, it's about the valuable and existing habitats we've got, but it's also about create, creating new ones as well. And that's really interesting. Uh, it's interesting to get some of the reflections from this morning about, well, what happens if you haven't even got that nature that you can do 10% on in the first place? Where do you take it from there? So we're going to have to get quite creative in the Tees Valley. It's not just about recovering what was there or what could be there. A lot of it's going to be about creation as well. 
Um, so yeah, we've we've got some interesting times ahead. Um, and as you can see, it's about guiding effective delivery of biodiversity net, net gain by helping developers and planning authorities avoid the most valuable existing habitats and focus habitat creation or improvement where it can achieve the most. So it's, I mean, these two things are running in parallel. Um, let me not jump to that yet. Um, ideally, we would have a local nature recovery strategy first. So we would have mapped it and go, great, this is the Tees Valley. This is what we want to see go there. That's a great area for tree planting. That's a great area for estuary edge development. That's a great area for that. That's going to do flood, flood control. That's going to be a great um, you know, park, all those kind of things. Um, yes, let's put, put our priorities there. And that's going to, to divide, uh, guide all the strategic planning uh, decisions across the Tees Valley. That's the habitat bank over there, all those kind of things. But the thing is, these things are going that are running in parallel. Um, so we're, we are going to have to develop them in, in parallel. Um, so um, it's the drive is to be practical. We need to get on and do this stuff. Um, it's uh, there will be a duty uh, on all public bodies to report on this, um, and also it's going to be linked into new funding mechanisms. We need to get creative about funding this. We can't keep lurching from one um, funding bid to the next, you know, the environment can't do it. You know, um, we, we need to actually integrate this into, um, into the whole thing. So that's what's happening. Right, <laughs> this is actually a bit of nature recovery here, a bit of nature creation. This is actually coat and wood in, um, in Stockton. Um, it's a community wood. We want to see more of this sort of thing, don't we? And there's been lots of work, uh, practical work that I've done there. I'm sure lots of you will know about this already. So this is about a long view. Um, it's happening in parallel. Um, of course, um, we're going to learn as we go along. Uh, it, this isn't about when the environment bill comes out. This is going to be a set of this is what you do. This is what you do. You know, we are learning. We're all going to learn. We're all going to feed back to the holes, as Becky's been saying this morning, that there's some been some lessons learned already from the, the, the five pilots that, that went ahead. Um, and of course, there's going to be great gains. Don't forget, this isn't just about nature recovery. It's about flood control. It's about carbon capture and storage uh, and our natural assets. It's about those incredible social and cultural gains that we get from the natural environment as well, uh, as well as all those economic gains. So it's this multifunctional uh, approach this is going to have. And as you can see from this photo, we've been doing this already you know we can do this we've got some fantastic examples on a small scale you know whether it be Bowesfield nature reserve in stockton whether it be uh, the multi-million pounds um flood schemes um in the estuary you know we've been we have been doing nature recovery in the tees valley for a while and and we can do more and we can become an exemplar area for low for nature recovery um, alongside all these other ambitions for net zero in our area so <clears throat> um, plans are afoot we are in discussions with the combined authority already we will of course want to involve you as planners um, from early doors on the development of this uh, it's it's going to be interesting it's going to be ambitious it's going to be a bit of work but we uh, want you to be in on on this alongside us so that's enough for me to say we can pick up more in the quick q a if you want i'm going to hand over to geraldine next um for for her bit um so here we go geraldine uh it's your slot thank you Great, thanks Rachel and thanks for having my slides following on from yours because I was just thinking oh god I don't know if I can share my screen quickly enough for this to move slickly so uh so thanks I'm, I'm Geraldine Brown I'm from Tees Valley Combined Authority and I've just got a few short slides to run through but hopefully what you'll see uh, in the slides that, uh, that I've pre-prepared is that they actually reflect a lot of the themes that have come out in the discussion today particularly around that strategic coordination role across Tees Valley uh, the need for integration and really embedding the role of nature recovery within our wider policy and, and funding approaches. So just to give a bit of a, a kind of a context to Tees Valley and some of the, the kind of specific plans that we have in place, um, I'm assuming more, most of you will be familiar with our strategic economic plan and our local industrial strategy, uh, both of which set out that headline economic ambition and narrative essentially what we want the Tees Valley economy to be 
um, that the CEP was last refreshed in 2016. And the, the Liz really was the, a sharp end update of that, uh, which was done in 2019, which really looked at um, our approaches to increase productivity. Um, and that, that was agreed locally, although as some of you may know, Liz is an, a no longer kind of currency in national policy. But notwithstanding that, the ambitions that are set out within that strategy are still very much relevant to what it is that we're trying to achieve for Tees Valley. And at the heart of that is delivering net zero. Um, and and, and we, we've kind of set out a very strong stall in terms of industrial decarbonisation, uh, net zero through industry, given some of the high emitting industries that, that our economy has been based on and how we really are at the, the vanguard of transitioning to a, a clean energy economy. And, and the role of nature really needs to wrap around and be complementary to that um, and, and be integrated to that industrial approach so that we're really driving a net zero ambition in its fullest sense across Tees Valley and showing ourselves to be at the, the forefront of that in a really innovative way. The last 18 months, uh, we've, we've had a significant impact on the economy. And as we look to, to reopen, recover, you know, green recovery is very much a, a phrase that's out there and, and, and something that a lot of people are looking to in terms of, well, how do we make sure that nature-based solutions are really part of that economic recovery, both in terms of business opportunities that can be realised, uh, job creation, retention in those industries of the future, which are, which are really uh, relevant to delivering net zero, a, a clean green economy. And, and as well, and as Becky talked about a lot this morning, how very much uh, the local nature recovery strategy or our approach to nature is, is embedded within a wider place-based approach. It's part of place-making. Uh, Nick said place baking there, place making, um, and really about how we, we make Tees Valley a vibrant and thriving place to be, um, you know, and, and for me that, that's very much around how we attract people into Tees Valley, we, we really uh, drive the potential of our visitor economy, how uh, active travel becomes much more of a realistic proposition for people in terms of moving around and, um, and the impacts that has on, on health and well-being and people being able to get out and enjoy green spaces. Um, as, as part of, uh, of an overall quality of life that you have in Tees Valley. Um, and then obviously within all of that is the, those place-based funding streams. And increasingly we're seeing an emphasis on the use of green space, the preserving of, of local assets and natural assets within funding streams. So recent examples for levelling up fund, community renewal fund, and I would expect to see something similar in the SPF when that comes through as well. Can I move on to the next slide, please, Rachel? I'm just going to press my buttons there and then realise I didn't have control of it. So in terms of kind of moving all of this forwards and how, how we kind of make this happen, how we do bring up, bring it all together, uh, clearly the evidence base is critical. Um, and, and, you know, we, we, we need to understand our current position, our baseline. And hot off the press, um, for those that may not be aware, um, the Tees Valley Natural Capital Account was, was just published last week. And that's something that we worked on with National with Natural England. And it was really piloting a way of pulling together information about the natural environment, really seeking to quantify uh, the value of nature and natural assets and understand what they mean within the wider ecosystem, both for us within Tees Valley and, and from a national perspective, Hopefully this, this data can all be comparable over time with other areas, but certainly for us in Tees Valley, what the natural capital account does is really look at that stock of assets that, that produce value and, and kind of just an indication of the types of assets we're talking about here. It's, it's ecosystems, it's the, the prevalence of different species, it's uh, water, land, minerals, it, natural processes and functions, all of those things which contribute and are part of the natural environment and seeking for the first time really to, to put a value against them in terms of what's what's their role within within the local place uh, and how can we realize, really realise the value of those assets. Um, and I haven't included a link actually to the, to the oh, actually there is a link, Rachel, have you put that now published? Is it, well, thank you. I, when I did these slides, I hadn't included a link, but thank you, Rachel. Uh, so what, we can circulate the slides afterwards. And for those who haven't seen it, you can have a look at the full detail of what's included in there. And it's 
Um, aside from kind of where we go with the local nature recovery strategy, it's a tool there that can be used by planners as well in terms of driving forward to the ambitions in your local plans and enables us to, uh, to consider projects in terms of changes in use of land that can make a, a really significant contribution, particularly to carbon sequestration um, as a result of using nature-based approaches. So in terms of next steps, um, so Rachel, if I can go on to the next slide, please. Um, so next steps, I think, uh, how, how do we move this forwards? And, and as we've talked about already this morning, we know we know a lot of what's coming through in the Environment Bill. We know the requirements that are going to be put upon us. And we're not um, we're not starting from scratch on this. I think, you know, again, which has come through really strongly this morning, we're starting from a fantastic position in Tees Valley based around the strength of the, the partnerships and the work that's taken place to date, not least through uh, the recognition of the nature partnerships role um, and, and those wider wider planning functions that take place across Tees Valley. So I think it, it kind of from here, it's for us to think about how we develop those partnerships and really coordinate the, uh, the resources that we have collectively to understand what, you know, what, what role of nature currently and what role of nature going forward, where do we want to really set out our stall as Tees Valley and really embed the, the nature recovery strategy within our wider leadership and governance structures within Teeds Valley. Um, so I think that's something we can we can start to move forwards with, and then kind of from a more kind of a national policy perspective, the, na the national consultation is currently live um, with a closing date of the 2nd of November, and we'll be submitting a response to that. Um, and I think, I know Rachel's been leading on that, but the more we can do that as a collective response from Tees Valley, I think that that would give a really strong message from, from the region. Um, and then with DEFRA beginning conversations later in the year about preparation for the rollout of the nature recovery strategies. And what we really wanna do is put Tees Valley on the front foot of being an, an area of best practice not just in terms of the requirements of the environment bill, but also what you know what our local ambitions are and, and realizing the mechanisms aligned to national policy that can enable us to get there. Thank you.